Beast!
Hey, this is Pegasus Rider here to show you Sunderman build. Sunderman is an all-round build designed to do your daily stuff like mapping, delving, incursions, overlaps, betrayal and red elder efficiently. As well it's super easy to manage, only using 5 buttons in total and skills don't spend man hour life makes the complete noob friendly build. Even if you haven't played Path of Exile before or even any action RPG game before, you'll have no problems managing this build. Sunderman build is mainly based on clearing huge packs of mobs as fast and easy as possible. We're gonna do that with Leap and Sunder. We're gonna use Leap for mobility, so we need attack speed everywhere possible to travel as fast as possible. Then we're gonna blast the whole screen with Sunder's huge AoE and Gladiator's bleed explosion combined with 100% bleed chance. Those bleed explosions comes from Gracious Violence Ascendancy skill. Then to make the build smooth and easy as possible, we're gonna be using Soul Taker on our fan. Insufficient mana doesn't prevent your melee attacks here, does that. We won't be worrying about mana anymore. And since mana is not a problem anymore, we're gonna fill all the mana reserve with buffs. We also will be using Val Ancestral Warchief mostly for boss fights, as well as Essence Monsters, capturing Einar Beasts, Incursion Architects, anything that takes long to kill. Let's talk about the passive tree a little bit. If you check the build guide page, you might have noticed there are many physical damage bonuses on the passive skill tree, and most of them comes with ailment bonuses which buffs our bleed damage a lot, and that makes bleed explosions happen faster. As well we have many life nodes to be able to have 7k health, and some regen nodes too to be able to use blood rage and still be able to regenerate life. As Bandit, we choose Oak because we need all that he gives. About the Keystones, Unwavering Stance here gives us the immunity to stun, which makes running smoother because we won't be interrupted by stuns occasionally and sometimes die thanks to them. And the downside is we cannot evade attacks, so we get Iron Reflexes here to convert all evasion to armor. And that gives us 41% physical damage reduction in total. There's also Resolute Technique. We're taking it because we need all our attacks to hit for the build to work properly. When we Sunder, we want all the mobs to get hit so we can blast them all at once. Before we get to the items, I have to point out that what you're about to see here is mostly meta gear for the build. Like this is the goal of the build. You can find the build running with more common level of items in the leveling section that you can find the time in the description of the video. As for the items, we're gonna use the Voto as Helm mainly because of attack speed and movement speed it has. It's really cheap as well. We're mostly moving with Leap, but we still need movement speed too, especially for some bosses, and also because we will be walking other than leaping too, so we need speed there as well. As for Enchant, we'll be needing Sunder damage. For Chest, we'll be using a Belly, because we need all the affixes here, and 6 link belly prices dropped a lot after Betrayal and Synthesis expansions. Obviously, Double Corrupt here is a luxury and you'll be fine without it. For right hand weapon, we're gonna be using Soul Taker. Again, you don't need Double Corrupted Implicit here. Also, Sunder uses main hand, so you don't need damage. On the left hand, we need an axe that has physical damage as high as you can afford. Then it needs to have attack speed as high as possible. On glows we have two options. On the first one, you need to have these two elder mods, physical damage, attack speed, high if possible, and life. And resistance is as needed. I'll tell you about the second option when we are on gems. On boots, you need life, movement speed, and lots and lots of resistances. A two-toned, legacy if possible, then you can pick two resistances and add this crafted mod which is called Wild Skills deal 60% increased damage during soul game prevention. I'll tell you about this mod later on. And as mentioned, we need 16% attack speed if you have killed recently, because we'll be constantly leaping and killing. Or for a cheaper alternative, you can get any triple resist boots with movement speed and maximum life. But here you can't craft soul game prevention mod because it's the suffix and this already has two prefixes and three suffixes. 
As belt, you need triple resist, life, and then craft increased damage on it. Armor is a nice bonus to have here as well. Try to buy a Stygium Wise if you can afford, if not, a Rustic Sash will do fine too. As for rings, we need two steel rings to be able to have double physical damage on both. Here you need intelligence for concentrated effect gem on Sunder, physical damage and life on both rings. And then needed resist. Here you need to craft increased damage on at least one of them. Other can be damage or attack speed depending on the situation of prefixes and suffixes. For the neck we need intelligence again, physical damage, life and 1% life leech at least, and then required resistances as well. In total, our resistances need to be overcapped to 109 as minimum for elemental weakness map mod. I just changed a couple of items here, so I got a 91. That's fine actually, but the dream number is 109. As flasks, we have two life flasks and three utility flasks. The one in the middle is always changing with the ones in inventory depending on the situation. Lion's Roar here and Taste of Fate are gonna stay in most cases. Armor on Lion's Roar gives us 15% more physical damage reduction and there's also melee bonus we need here, also knockback becomes useful on some bosses. Taste of Fate here for physical and cold damage reduction, chance to avoid being frozen and chilled and 30% damage bonus. It's a pretty nice flask. As we continue through the video, we're gonna make a macro for flasks on buttons 3, 4 and 5 because we'll be activating them all at once. I'll be explaining it a little bit later. As other flasks, we'll use Atsiris Promise for Chaos Resistance, Basil Flask when we need additional physical damage reduction, Quartz Flask for delving, this one for extra magic finds when mapping, and Soul Catcher for bosses. Here if you have this increased damage during soul game prevention crafted mod on boots, you need to reduce soul game prevention duration as low as possible, being 20. Because you need soul game prevention duration as long as possible to have that 60% damage bonus as long as possible. If you're gonna go with triple resist boots or don't wanna use that crafted mod, we need that mod as high as possible, being 40%. Because we don't have the crafted mod, and we need to start gaining souls as soon as possible, so we can use the skill again as soon as possible. As for the skill game placement, we have Sunder on our 16th belly. Faster attacks on multi-strike being the most important too, we also have melee physical damage support and ruthless support for the bleeding stuff. As for the 6th support game, we're gonna use concentrated effect because Sunder's AoE is already pretty huge, this one makes it a faster killer. We also have 20% increased area of effect in passive skill tree to compensate for the lost area of effect that concentrated effect does. For Leap Slam, we're gonna use melee glows, it needs to be Elder Spike Glows. Elder mods there providing faster attack support and more attack speed is a huge bonus to Leap and faster attacks being on the item grants us the possibility to add one more support gem. As support, we have 45 for a bit of defense, ice bites for 15% chance to freeze, and lastly, culling strike support for 10% attack speed, and when a boss has 10% or less health, it gives us the ability to kill the boss with a single leap. Our boss killer, Ancestral War Chief, will be on main hand with melee physical damage support and main support. Here, you have another cheaper option too. Instead of getting these Elder Glows, you can just get regular spike glows like these and put Wild Ancestral War Chief to glows and then Bloodlust there as the fourth camp. Wild Ancestral skill normally buffs your melee damage by giving 32% more, but when you put Bloodlust there, you make Sunder buff Val Ancestral 2 because it makes it can't inflict bleed but instead deal increased and more damage to bleeds caused by Sunder. Then we're gonna put Leap Slam, Faster Attacks and Fortify to main end. This makes Leap significantly slower but more than enough for super fast clear speed. As well you can Leap kill the bosses but Val Ancestral is strong enough there so no worries. On Helm we'll be running Blood Rage. Blood Rage is really important for this build because it gives huge attack speed and 1.2% life leech. Since we have 0 mana and Blood Rage is not an attack skill, 
we need blood magic here to spend life instead. Then we have enhanced support for 6% more attack speed. Lastly, we have increased duration support to activate blood rage and completely forget it. Buffs are in offhand as well. And cast while damage taken is on boots. We have immortal call, enfeeble and increased duration support running there. Classic cast while damage taken set up for melee. As well, don't forget to stop them leveling at specific levels, being 1, 3, 5 and 20. As for jewels, you need attack speed, life and damage. You can have double damage too. And try to have abyssal and normal jewels 50-50. Running the build is pretty easy. I'll first explain why and how we're gonna make a macro for flasks. The reason we'll be using a macro is firstly because it's allowed and also running speed in this game became too fast that pressing buttons 3, 4 and 5 in this build makes you lose time. I made my macro on W button, Blood Rage on E, Weep on Q and Life Flask buttons are right on top of them. Pretty fast and easy to use. Though I highly advise using a mouse button macro because it's easier and more comfortable to play. And W macro has downsides that in chat it writes 345 when you press W so you need to press shift and make a capital when running. When not running, you can disable it on system tray by right clicking the logo and clicking suspend hotkeys. To enable it again, just click on it again. You can find the link to download W macro in video description. When running the build, we start with activating Blood Rage bodily here. Then we start leaping and when we find a pack, we press W before sundering them so flasks will be activated. We can press W right before each pack one time without counting or checking our buffs because our flasks will fill up right after we kill a pack. Then we keep on leaping and sundering until we find the next pack. Pretty easy. But let's see it on action to make sure. On the first video, you see it played using shift button for attacking. After that we will try using auto attack for Sunder, which many players use nowadays instead of shift. Then we'll be using Val Ancestral Warchief right before we start sundering bosses. We need to place them close to us to have the 32% damage buff. For single phase bosses, we'll just activate two totems at once and start sundering. For two phase bosses, we'll activate only one at first phase, fire until first phase ends, then at the second phase, activate our second ancestral totem and kill the boss. Here you see tier 15 Defiled Cathedral single phase boss fight first, then Alva Temple boss fight which is two phase. No risk, no reward.
If there's a third phase or more, we need to wait for the souls to fill up again. Some bosses spawn monsters so your souls fill up easily, but some bosses don't so it fills up slower. Or some phases have monsters, some phases there's only the boss like the Red Elder. As well before fighting some bosses like Elder, Shaper and Desaro, your wall souls reset when you enter their domain so you have to wait some time to be able to use Wall Ancestral again. For Red Elder, if you check the Red Elder fight video at the intro, I first waited for two to fill, then used them to end the first phase. Then at the second phase, I first used one because I didn't need the second there, then when portals went insane, I used two at once, and after that, when two filled up again, I saved it for the third phase, and then blasted the boss at the third phase. So you can make up your own strategy different for each boss. The more you play each boss, the better strategy you'll make. Other than bosses, for essence monsters, incursion architects, or anything that takes long to kill, just palm your two totems at once. That's all about running the build. So how do we level? We need to use Cleave until level 12 where we can start using Sunder or you can get it after the Siren's Cadence quest in Act 1. For Leap you can start at level 10 or get it after the Cage Brute quest from Tarklay in Act 1. For single targets we we'll use Double Strike until level 70 and then we need to buy a Val Ancestral Warchief and switch to that. Or you can level couple Ancestral Warchief on second weapon set and then corrupt them instead of buying. At level 59, we can switch to Soul Taker and start running the buffs. From that point, it will be all about upgrading to meta items. But let's test the build with a cheaper gear than we did in the build mechanics section. This is also the same gear in the build guide page. As well, this is the required gear to run the build and help up. We'll be testing on a tier 15 defiled cathedral map. It's all about leveling this build actually, because Sunder is one of the easiest skills to level with. As well, many melee builds use Sunder for leveling, so you don't need to do anything special here. You can just level with self-found items. But here are some items for you that can help with leveling if you want to make it even faster. Each category from lower to higher level requirements.
Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video and will enjoy playing the build. I'll be updating the build guide page as the game evolves with new patches and items so you can keep checking it to see possible future changes to the build. You can also keep checking my chart Raziel for possible future changes to the Meta Gear version of the build. If you see any misinformation or a way to improve the build, please don't hesitate to post them here in comment section. As well, if you have any questions about the build, just ask here in comments, I'll be replying them. Good luck, have fun, and happy Sunday!